YouTube, welcome back to Intuition. Today's video, we're going to be developing our intuition for Lagrange multipliers. The utility of Lagrange multipliers is that they allow us to solve a lot of different types of physical problems that have constraints. So it's a good mathematical tool to be familiar with and to have an intuition for. And like with everything else, the best way to develop your understanding of a certain topic is to answer questions. All right, let's dive into it. Question number one. Question number one states, a tiny insect is confined to living on the line segment above where the temperature varies across the segment. If the arrows at each point shows the direction of maximum temperature increase, which point is a stationary temperature point on the segment? Okay, we just need to know what the word stationary means. Stationary means to remain constant. It is asking us for the point on this line segment where the temperature does not vary as we move along the segment. Because this ant is confined to living on this line. And we're also told that the temperature varies along the line. So all we need to do is look at each point and see at which point we can move left and right along the line without having a change in our temperature. So let's go ahead and look at the points. So if you look at point D, you have the arrow pointing down and to the left. It points down and it points to the left, which means that if the ant moves over to the left from point D, there's going to be an increase in temperature. So that will not be a stationary point because the temperature would change if we move left or right of that point. So D would be incorrect. We could say the same for C because C, the temperature increases if we move down and if we move to the right. The arrow points down and it points to the right. So if we're at point C, if we move over to the right, temperature will go up. And if we move to the left of point C, temperature will go down. So that's not a stationary point either. And if you look at D, D is definitely not a stationary point because it clearly shows that if we move over to the right, there's going to be an increase in temperature. And of course, if we move over to the left of B, the temperature will decrease. So B is also not a stationary point. So the correct answer has to be answer choice A, right? And of course, if you take a look at A, the arrow points directly down. It points directly away from the line of confinement. If we are at point A, the only way to get a temperature change is to move down or up. But remember, the ant is not allowed to move down or up. It is confined to living on the line. So the ant can only move left or right. And if you're at point A, if you move left or right, the temperature doesn't change because the temperature change only occurs if you move directly down or directly up. So point A is definitely the correct answer. So when it comes to Lagrange multiplier, you're usually trying to find a stationary point of some function. Usually we're trying to find a stationary point of some function T. Given the fact that we are confined to some region or to some curve. The region or the curve that we're confined to is going to be given by some function g. On the curve that the ant is confined to living on, we're going to require that g be a constant and usually we choose the constant zero. So the function g equals zero as long as we are on the curve. And just like in the last problem, to find the stationary points, all we needed to do was find the points where the change in temperature or also called the temperature gradient, points directly away from the curve that we're confined to. That's basically the heart of the concept of Lagrange multiplier, because we have a function g that is a constant on the region that we're confined to, which means that the function g does not change as long as we move along the curve that we're confined to living on. But if we move off that curve, we're going to get a change in G. So the gradient of G points directly away from the curve that we're confined to, which is perfect because that's exactly what we want our temperature gradient to do. We want our temperature gradient to point directly away from the curve at a specific point. And if the temperature gradient does that, then that point is a stationary point. So as long as the gradient of T is directly proportional to the gradient of G, we are at a stationary point. That symbol here, that upside down V, is called del. Del allows you to point in the direction of temperature increase. So del of T is going to be directly proportional to del of G. And the proportionality constant we call lambda. And lambda is what we call our Lagrange multiplier. So let's move on to a harder problem. Okay, problem number two states, an ant is confined to living on a curve defined by x squared plus y squared equals four. If the temperature on the entire plane is defined by t of xy equals 2xy squared plus x squared, at what points on the curve does the ant experience stationary temperature? 
given that we've already gone over the concept of how to find stationary points, we already know what to do, right? So let's go ahead and solve this problem. The temperature along the entire xy plane is given by 2xy squared plus x squared. Now what we need to do is find our function g. The region of confinement was the function x squared plus y squared equals 4. Therefore, x squared plus y squared minus 4 has to be equal to 0. Therefore, our function g of xy is equal to x squared plus y squared minus 4. Now, all we have to do is require that the gradient of t is directly proportional to the gradient of g. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and solve for the gradient of t. So how do we do that? Take the partial derivative with respect to one direction and add it to the partial derivative with respect to the other direction. We have two directions on the xy plane. We have direction x and we have direction y. So let's go ahead and take the partial derivative with respect to x to get the gradient in the x direction. For the first thing, we just have 2y squared plus the derivative of x squared is just 2x. So we have 2y squared plus 2x. And that is our gradient in the x direction. And we describe our x direction with a unit vector called i. So that's our gradient in the x direction. And now we need to get the gradient in the y direction. So now we just take the derivative with respect to y and treat x as a constant. When we do that, what do we get? The derivative is 4xy. We describe our y direction with the symbol j, a vector in the y direction. So that's our temperature gradient. And now we find our curve gradient. So to get the gradient of g, we do the same thing. And of course, our temperature gradient doesn't have to be equal to our surface gradient. It just has to be directly proportional to. So we multiply g by our Lagrange multiplier, lambda. And now we just need to set these two gradients equal to each other. And when it comes to vectors, vectors have different components. So all we have to do is set the vector components equal to each other. Okay, so setting the i components equal to each other, we get 2x plus 2y squared equals 2x times lambda. And setting the y components equal to each other, we get 4xy equals 2 lambda y. Okay? Okay, so taking a look at our first equation, we notice that y must be equal to zero because on the left-hand side, we have 2y squared, but on the right-hand side, we don't have any function of y squared. That leaves us with 2x equals 2x times lambda. Therefore, lambda must be equal to one. Now let's move on to our other equation, 4xy equals 2y times lambda. For this one, we already know that y equals zero, so we get zero equals zero. We got nothing out of that equation, but there's one more equation that we can use, right? And that was our equation for G, our curve equation. So G was x squared plus y squared minus four equals zero. We've just shown that y equals zero. And if y equals zero, we have x squared minus four equals zero, and therefore x squared equals four. And taking the square root of both sides, we get x equals plus or minus two. Perfect, so we have found our stationary points. We have x equals plus or minus two, and we know that y equals zero. And when you look at our answer choice, the correct answer would be answer choice C, minus two zero and two zero. So that brings us to our last question, which will allow us to generalize the utility of Lagrange multipliers. So let's go ahead and look at this question. This question says, an ant is confined to living on a curve defined by G1 equals zero and G2 equals zero. What is the most general condition that T must satisfy to assure all stationary points are found? So this is very similar to the other problems that we've solved, except that in this case, we're given two confinements. G1 is some curve that we're being asked to stay on, which could be something like a circle. And then G2 is another curve that we also have to stay on, which could be a different type of curve. Maybe it's a parabola. And therefore, in the end, the region that we're restricted to is the region of overlap between G1 and G2. And this is very generalizable because you can pile on the Gs. You can add as many Gs as you want to. At the end of all those Gs, what you're going to have is a region of overlap and that region of overlap between all those different regions of confinement is the region that you're restricted to so in this case that would be the red curve which is the region of overlap and here's the thing the gradient of all these different g's will point directly away from that region which is perfect because what you want is for your temperature gradient to point directly away from the region and if the temperature gradient points directly away from that region then that point is a stationary point. Since all these different G's point away from the region, all you need to require is that your temperature gradient be a linear combination of the gradient of all your different G's, okay? Because all your different G's point away from the region. And as long as your temperature gradient is a linear combination of these different gradients that point away from the region, then your temperature gradient will also point away from the region. All right, so when you shuffle through all these answer choices, what's the correct answer? The correct answer would be answer choice D, 
All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, this was more of an advanced math topic, um, but I think it's very intuitive. Even if you have not taken advanced calculus before, uh, just by being able to listen to a good explanation, you can definitely develop a, an intuitive knowledge of what's going on. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, keep watching, keep supporting. Uh, views have been going down, I noticed, but that's okay, right? This channel is for those of you who love to learn. So for those of you who still continue to watch these videos, I don't care if it's only five or six of you, I appreciate you guys. And uh, keep looking out for more videos. All right, with that said, I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.